Back now with the latest results from the primary elections in Arizona. Yeah, we're watching the results roll in for the GOP nomination for governor. Now, that race is still too close to call between Trump back candidate Carrie Lake and the establishment's choice in Karen Taylor Robeson. But we are seeing Arizona voters make clear choices in other GOP races across the state, including who will face off against Democratic Senator Mark Kelly in November. Of course, this is where we find NBC News correspondent Vaughn Hilliard. He's in Phoenix for us with the very latest. Vaughn, good morning. So let's start with a race that's been called the GOP Senate nomination. Blake Masters, who was endorsed by former President Trump, won the election and will now face off against Mark Kelly in November. How significant is this win for Masters and really, I guess, for the weight of Trump's endorsement in this state? Yeah, good morning, Savannah. We have every reason to believe that this will now be a close general election campaign. Blake Masters, who stood alongside Donald Trump just over one week ago at a final campaign rally here, uh, he's going to be facing Democratic incumbent Senator Mark Kelly, who just two years ago won his race here by several points, uh, but is all, uh, also still kept a, a positive approval rating here in the state of Arizona. And yet this is a longtime conservative state here. It's very odd to have two Democrats representing it here. And Blake Masters is new to politics, but he is the former former right hand of Peter Thiel, the tech executive billionaire who funneled more than $15 million behind Masters' campaign here. Uh, over the next 95 days, you should expect to see a lot of national attention on this U.S. Senate race as Republicans hope that they can make a pickup opportunity here. Vaughn, let's talk more about that high profile battle for the Republican nomination for governor. Right now, still too close to call. The race has really taken a turn in the days leading up to the election as Robeson's campaign has gained on Kerry Lake. What more can you tell us about this one? You know, this is a campaign in which Carrie Lake was, you know, the front runner for the better part of the last year, ever since announcing her bid. But you, know, you saw Karen Taylor Robeson, another political newcomer, outspend her by more than a five to one margin and ultimately chip away at the reputation that Carrie Lake had built up as a longtime local news anchor here. Uh, Carrie Lake is somebody who uh, propagates selection conspiracy theories, uh, stands shoulder to shoulder with Donald Trump and uh, is uh, and is even called for the jailing of her political rivals and elections officials. And yet what we watched uh, unfold last night uh, is ultimately a likely carry Lake victory. We there are still upwards of 200,000 ballots to be counted, but those ballots are going to be folks who turned in their ballots uh, in the last 48 hours. And those folks uh, have been heavily trending towards Kerry Lake because uh, that wing of the Republican Party has told their voters not to trust mail-in voting. And that's why you see those folks, those Kerry Lake type voters come in and turn in their ballots in person here. Uh, we are very likely going to be looking at a Kerry Lake uh, and Katie Hobbs, who is the current Secretary of State of Arizona, uh, she won the Democratic nomination last night. We're going to see these two square off in what is really going to be a fundamental race uh, that really has an eye on the, you know, the democracy at large and the potential certification of the 2024 presidential election results, which that responsibility lies with the governor here in the state of Arizona. Again, this is a race that you can see with a lot of national implications uh, as Democrats and Republicans uh, see the all importance of winning these statewide seats. Vaughn, we also saw Arizona Speaker of the House Rusty Bowers lose his bid for a state Senate seat to David Farnsworth, who supported Trump's claims that the 2020 election was stolen. Now, Bowers was really on the other end of the spectrum in that fight. He even testified before the January 6th committee, where he stated he had refused to go along with Trump's efforts to overturn the election results mm -hmm. in this state. So what kind of implications does that result have going forward? You can't get much more local than a legislative race. And when we talk, Savannah, about the impact of the January 6th Select Committee's public hearings, uh, what ultimately that would uh, have an impact in changing Republican voters, well, uh, last night was a testament to where the voters are remaining today. Rusty Bowers became a national figure because he testified about the pressure campaign that Trump allies placed on him to overturn the election. Uh, but he stood his ground and he did not fold to those pressures. And you see the results there. He lost to a Trump endorsed challenger by a sizable margin. And after 16 years in public office, uh, he's no, not going to be returning to the Arizona state legislature next year. I think that the Arizona primary here says a lot 
about where at least Arizona Republican voters, what their takeaways are when not only the January 6th public hearings, but what they want their party to look like into the future. All right, Vaughn Hilliard, so much going on in that state. Thanks for being up early and covering it all. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.